DJ Reader joins us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. Man, this guy, stud, stud. And maybe the biggest oversight of the season was DJ Reader not getting any Pro Bowl recognition. I'm telling you what, his teammates and the Bengals defensive coaching staff, they know what DJ Reader meant to that defensive football team. And boy, did he play at a high level. He just controlled the middle of the football field and the centers, they did not enjoy going up against big old number 98, DJ Reader out there. The guy was a beast all season long. He talks about the season, he talks about his family, he talks about football. You're going to find out a lot about DJ Reader, and it's all good. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, always coming from our outstanding studios. And we've got an outstanding guest today. This guy is the center of the Bengals defense. He's the hub, man. It all starts with DJ Reader just mm -hmm. gobbling people up in the in the middle of the line of scrimmage. And, uh, you know, in, in my opinion, April 2nd, 2020, when DJ Reader signed with the Cincinnati Bengals, the turnaround started. Welcome to the uh, to our little conversation here, big man. Great to have you. Oh no, I appreciate you having me, man. I'm excited. Excited to have the convo. So let's let's do a little DJ Reader. This is your life, man. Let's let's go right. back to the uh, to the high school days. Uh, you're you're a North Carolina guy, Greensboro, North yes, Carolina, Grimsley High School. Um, not only not only football. Yeah, you're an outstanding baseball player. Give us a little history on that baseball background. Um, I played a lot of it. Uh, I was a kid who, you know, you playing rec ball as a kid, you you got weight limits and all those type of things that are right all on football. And uh, I couldn't really. I spent that whole first year I played just running around the field, trash bag on, trying to lose weight to make weight limit and stuff. And <laughs> before you know it, I was playing. I was like eight, playing with like. 10, 11 year olds. And then the next year when I was like, nah, my dad was like, I mean, those kids would be 12, 13. Like it's, it's just too big of a gap. So I just started playing more and more baseball. You know, it never really had a weight limit on. My mom played college softball. My granddad played in the Negro League. So oh. I always had a love for it. We went to a lot of baseball games, uh, War Memorial Stadium with the Greensboro, where well, they used to be the Greensboro Bats and the Grasshoppers now. It's right down the street from my grandma's house. So I just spent a lot of time there, a lot of time watching the game. So I just kind of fell in love with it. Now, I mean, you even in, in uh, 2016 at, at uh, or 13 was at Clemson. Yeah. You uh, you pitched, right? I mean, you were a pitcher as well as a football player, right? Yeah, I played both. Um, I did more inner squad pitching than I did in real games. Uh, but I was on the team. You know, it was, it was a blessing from Coach Leggett to be able to let me be a part of that team. And. Got a couple of bats, you know. Guy had a run scored, so I, I didn't put up all zeros across the stack. <laughs> so, <laughs> as a pitcher, fastball, curveball, slider change. What'd you have? What was your yeah? Work? I threw fastball, cur or fastball. I threw four seam, two seam. I threw a cutter, and I was more of a chain slider guy. I could never really get the twelve six going. <laughs> it was hard for me. I just I never understood how guys just get that loop on their pitch. So I was always yeah. a slaughter guy. So I imagine at some point in time, uh, were you were you were an accomplished catcher as well? I mean, with your body type, was like man, when I was younger, yeah, when I was younger. But you know, I catchers have to be blessed with some of the best knees yep. that God could ever give because staying in that stance. For nine innings is is brutal. I, when I was younger, I used to hate it. Always wearing the knee savers, and you know, just moving from that stance is just super awkward. So uh, I, I stopped catching probably around twelve, but it helped out a lot when I was younger. I did it a lot. You know, I caught a. I was fortunate to be homeschooled, so I caught a lot of bullpens from college guys or guys <laughs> who were in high school when I was a young kid. So I kind of understood, you know, just how they went about pitching, how they attacked it, how they attacked the zone when they were throwing that fastball, what they were looking for, those type of things. I, I, I was always, I've always been kind of a student of the game. You were, were you a cleanup hitter? No, I batted third. That way I could third? Get, yeah, that way I could get three at-bats. There sure. you go. 
There you go. <laughs> you, had, you had a big stick too, huh? Yeah, play well, play well. I hit pretty good. Huh. So any other sports besides uh football and baseball? Anything oh, else? Oh yeah, I was a gym rat. I played basketball. I was always at, I was always at school. I I was one of those kids I didn't come home during any season after school. I was always at school practicing. Everything just kind of rolled over into the next season. I just figured school didn't end until like seven thirty when practice got out. <laughs> so when you uh when you advance from from high school to the to the college level, yeah. you go to Clemson. Um, yeah. What what did it come down to? What, what schools were in the final mix when you decided to go to Clemson? I was down to like Maryland and Clemson. Uh, Maryland just always liked the school. Kind of you know I wasn't like the biggest college football fan, so I didn't know much about it to be honest. Um, my dad was a Chapel Hill guy. I was a Duke basketball fan. So, but college football, I just didn't watch very much. You know, I just didn't watch the game of football. We sucked in high school. Luckily, they're good now. Like, I get to go back and watch my high school and be super proud. But when I was in high school, I won nine games in four years. So, it really? wasn't like, yeah. So, it wasn't like I was super excited to go watch football on Saturdays after I just got beat up on Fridays playing my heart out. Um go both so, ways i just end up going down to clemson kind of falling in love with it a uh, bunch of guys down there my age we had a young young team when i got there i think the year before they had 49 freshmen i came in we ended up having a couple 12 more so we had 50 something players that were freshmen and sophomores wow and so that was just kind of it fell in love with the vibe of coach sweeney and the guys down there just kind of that family atmosphere you had, and it was it was right down the road. It was only three and a half hours, so it wasn't too far away from my parents. Yeah, make it easy for them. When yeah. you were in high, when, were you a two way lineman in high school? Yeah, I played offense. I was a recruited as offensive guard, and then ended up playing. Um, I was a three star guard rated, and then ended up playing D tackle. Really? So you, you coming out of high school? You were you were? More oh yeah, I played a lot of OL. That was I didn't really have moves in high school and stuff, so I didn't really watch you know pass rush was like a premium thing in high school so i didn't didn't have those moves i didn't really get to the quarterback uh so i just never really focused on playing it you know i got to got into my senior year i learned a little bit more and you know kind of started enjoying it a little bit more so take us through your uh your collegiate experience at clemson with uh with coach sweeney that had to be a pretty good time of your life yeah it was a good time i got there it was the first time i had won games honestly like i, I was just excited to win some damn football games i was like man shoot this this is what winning feels like and then it, uh you know you you're in there with i was blessed to be there with guys like grady jerry vic beasley stefan anthony you know carlos watkins christian was there when i was there just a bunch of guys coach hobby was our d-line coach uh our ends coach uh just more and more guys who I was really friends with. Our quarterback was super nice. That was when Taj was there. Everybody kind of knew him. He was the man. And our coaches made it feel really like we were a family. I think, you know, and then spending all that time with my dog, Joey Batson, uh, our strength coach down there, the legend, you know, it, it just really made hard me as a person. It was fun. Uh, he made it real competitive, uh, the competitive edge. And, you know, I think, they did a good job of just getting the best out of guys, like guys wanting to compete on that edge all day, but knowing that, you know, this is my brother, we're going to compete and we're going to go and we're going to go in the locker room. We're going to hang out all day. And this is what we do every day. You know, it, it sounds like you were part of a big culture change at the collegiate level. And then here in Cincinnati, yeah. it sounds like you've been part of that process two different times in your life. Yeah. Yeah. And then just understanding that process, you know, it, it was a lot, you know, I climbed that mountain in the collegiate level of going to the national championship and we didn't win. Right. You know, very similar to last year, just kind of learning that process of getting to that level of what it takes, what it takes day in and day out. How you got to be on your grind day in, day out. The details of the game, what's important, how little things will equate to big things and just knowing where you are being in that moment. So. I think they did a good job of coaching that at Clemson. You know, it was drilled into us that best was the standard. So no matter what you wanted to do, you wanted to be the best at it. And you, that, that's what you got after the tour. You know, um, were you always a, a big, a bigger guy? Or yeah. did you yeah. have a growth spurt where it was like? No, nah, I've, you know? I've always been steadily bigger. Um, yeah. It's kind of weird now because I look at my son. He's just huge. So he, he's just <laughs> a steadily big kid. He's not overly fat or anything, but he's just a big kid. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's just kind of always been me. I've always been a bigger kid. Always had a bunch of cousins and stuff who were smaller and 
always ran around with them, neighborhood, run around with those kids, but just always been a bigger kid for sure. So at, at Clemson, did you re, did you remake your body kind of? I mean, what with the with the uh, strength coach was he a big influence on you? Yeah, I think just the 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 grind, embracing it. You can't get away from weights when you're in there with Joey Bass, and there's no way. And so yeah. you just learn to love it. You learn to love his attitude about it. You learn to love how hyped up he have you. You know, you're out there just you're just like his little minions, just walking around, just <laughs> everybody, just all you know, all, all amped up to get in there with him. You know, you have those arguments and those real growing pains in that strength in that in there with your strength coach. He sees you every day. You spend most of your time with him. You got a level of respect for him that is a little bit different than you have for everybody else. Sounds like he was definitely a mentor. Are there any other teammates, coaches, anybody that you would list as, you know, mentors at, at any level, high school, collegiate? Yeah, or? yeah. I had a bunch, especially when I got to Clemson, you know, losing, honestly, losing my dad there. I had a lot of guys who I had to lean on. Uh, yeah. you know, Jeff Davis, Coach Hobby, them being there, Coach Dan Brooks, all those guys like Coach Venerables, we'll all still have a amazing relationship. You know, it, 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 all those people mean a lot to me. Milt, the um, mental health guy that they have there. Um, me, the time I spent with Milt probably means the most to me in general, just because, you know, he was with me through the entire time when I went through that, you know, I had to step away from football for a little bit and, yeah. you know, just checking in on me, me and him talking and those things. So, uh, I had a bunch of people who, you know, during that time that, I, and, you know, of course, people back home who knew my dad, who knew him personally and those things that, you know, I was able to lean on those folks and, you know, it meant a lot to me, especially being a kid. Yeah, that's I can't imagine that. That's that's a uh, you talk about adversity. People yeah. think uh, think pe people think they dealt with adversity. Man, when you're talking about the death of a, of a dad, he's I mean, that's about as big an, an adversity uh, as as you can absolutely deal with. And I admire you for working your way through all of that, man. Thank you, I appreciate. It. You know, it's a it's kind of weird. It's come full circle. You know, um, uh, people who know me, I don't really celebrate. You know, my birthday that much uh my dad died the day before my birthday really yeah so yeah. i don't really celebrate you know the, my birthday that much but you know uh 2020 comes around april 2nd that's my dad's birthday so you know i signed end up signing yeah. with cincinnati you know everything kind of comes full circle and you know it works out for the best and you know i i, was, I don't complain or freight I, I, I was blessed to have my dad for 19 years of my life and he was a great teacher and touched so many lives while I was alive that, you know, it taught, really taught me like what a man should be. Yeah. Sometimes I am lost and have questions and those things get tough, but I know that he's given me the correct tools in my toolbox to be a man, a good father, a good husband one day. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, your dad did a heck of a job because you, you were raised right. You're, you're a special human being, and man, your dad's legacy lives every day with you, my man. There's no thank question. you. I appreciate that. No question about it. Um, when you when you sign with the Cincinnati Bengals, yes, sir. I can like you talk about uh, at that point when when you did talk to the Bengals organization. That's when Joe Burrow got drafted in that draft. You know, mm -hmm. later on, a little bit later on, you obviously had a pretty good idea that Joe Burrow was going to be the quarterback in Cincinnati. And that was that a big plus in your decision? Yeah. Yeah. I t I, I've told this story before. And it's funny because like everybody's always like Drew Lock, Drew Lock gets str strays because of, because of it. This is a real conversation between me and my agent. He's like, so what you do want to do? I was like, I mean, I've at least been to Denver, dude. I've never been to Cincinnati. I mean, we played up there one time. I was like, but it's COVID. I don't get to go on no visits. He's like, yeah, man, you don't get to go on any visits. I was like, Come on, bro. He's like, yeah, man, but you either. I was like, but Denver's got Drew Lock. He's like, yeah, but they won four games. He's like, so you're betting on four games or Joe Burrow who's coming out of college off a of Heisman. I was like, you know what? <laughs> Whatever. I was like, we, we're going to go with Cincinnati. I got a feel for some of the guys down there more, so that's what we're going with. And, you know, I'm going to ride this Joe Burrow coattail. <laughs> I'll tell you, it was great, great decision, great move. I, I, yeah. You know, um, defensively, Lou Anarumo is getting a lot of credit for being so multiple and diverse with all mm -hmm. the packages and schemes and personnel groupings and everything. Bottom line is, though, that he knows. Uh, I, I, I can't imagine how comfortable he feels as a defense coordinator knowing no matter what I do around him, I got DJ Reader stuffing 
the center. <laughs> I can DJ reader over the football. Can, you have to control the middle of the football field. Got I can control all the kinds of fancy and pretty around them, but man, I got to have that block of granite right there. And uh, what does that mean to you to have that that type of uh, you know a role and and uh, amongst your teammates and the coaches? I mean, they all respect the heck out of you and what you do. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it means a lot. You know, those guys, they see me putting work. And I, I'm a, you know, I'm getting emotional talking about, like, just my team because I'm big on just watching guys work. I watch how those guys around me put in work and how they care and how much, you know, they, they, they go about their day. Guys like Cheeto on the outside, Eli, Logan, Jesse, Vaughn, all those guys, like the guys who I play with up front, I watch them every day. But just watching – how detailed all those guys are in our craft, in their craft, and how much it means to them on game day when we go out there, when we compete in practice, how much guys are locked in. It it makes you want to step up your level. Like you, I don't want to let those guys down. You know, um, I respect myself and I feel like I'm a great player. I feel like I've earned that respect from a lot of guys around the league. But those guys who stand out with me, those other 10 guys who stand out with me every single day, I got to earn their respect. I got to let them know that they can count on DJ. That our defense coordinator is comfortable with us doing whatever he wants to do because we've all prepared that way. And I think that that means a lot. You know, we had a lot of guys just come in last year and just jail. Nobody's got egos. Nobody's tripping. I play a selfless position. I'm already knowing that. So I, just, I don't, I, my ego's checked at the door. Right. But my ego for the other team running the rock, that will not be tolerated. Like I'm not tolerating them running the ball because I want to make those guys in the back end's jobs easier. And those guys who we got, that we pay to go rush the pass. I want their jobs to be easier. So, um, you know, and, cause I want to win. That's really what it all comes down to. I want to win. I hate losing. I, I, I hate losing more than I like winning. I mean, you know, cause I, I, I can't, I can't walk around and look at the people in the city when we lose. Like I can't look at people in the eye outside of, the gates when we lose like that it burns me to my soul that bad so you know i want to win and it means a lot that they trusted me to be in that middle and hold things down man i'll tell you what that what's your your comment right there should be uh put on a billboard with your picture <laughs> because when, when they're, they're talking about football has to be important to the guy the player yeah. he has to love the game man that's that's what we're talking about right there. What you're talking about, DJ. I mean, you're you're a great example of uh, of what Zach's talking about with this culture that is being established with the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, everybody loves football, and it's mm. uber important to everybody, isn't it? It's super important, and I, and all the guys get yeah, all those guys. They come from winning programs, and they come from places, and they see what our culture is now. It's to come in and compete. And I think I was talking to somebody about it last year. I mean, th yesterday. Me and Cheetah were talking about it. I was like, you know what, man? Like, no no BS this year is getting tolerated. He, mm -hmm. And he was just like, what do you mean? I was just like, I felt like we were just on that ride last year. And, like, we were so competitive and everybody was so locked in. Like, we didn't – even if it was little stuff around us, we didn't, like, you know, pay attention to it. I was like, we got to hone everything in this year. You know, everything as a team, everything in our building now. And I think that's going to be super important. You know, we got a bunch of guys, like us, like you said, who care, who they competitive, they young, they fiery. I looked around the other day. I was like, damn, it's me. My, I mean, Mike Thomas is what, year 11, Lael's year eight. And then after that, it's that's a bunch of guys year seven. And so I'm just like, I'm thinking around the locker room like that. It's 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 a lot of guys who are in that same age group and just really still in their prime and really excited to play. Yeah. Just how young and fiery everybody is, you know. Um, I'm in year seven and really, really one of the older guys, like mm. all in that real old. Or then I came in today. I had ten year vets, eleven year vets, twelve year, you know. But it's different, you know. And everybody's in their prime. Everybody's super competitive. Nobody's. You don't have anybody lacking at practice. Everybody's trying to practice. Everybody's trying to go out there and show that next guy that they still got it. They got that edge. And you're going to see that player that you see on Sundays here every day. You know, the, again, talking about how important uh, the middle is yeah. to, and the middle of the football field in baseball, catch a shortstop center field. You know, I yep. mean, in, in football, it's, it's, it's you uh, in, 
over the over, over the interior of the offensive line. Uh, Logan Wilson at the linebacker position. You know the safeties that you got back there and the, defending the the middle of the football field. It, it's super important, and I mean mm-hmm. you got to take away the, the, the shortest distance between two points is that straight. You got to take away that straight line. Stuff, straight away right? that straight line. Yeah, and those guys are my guys on the field. Those that's who I do the most communicating with. Yeah, I talk to my defensive linemen. It's usually we're on the sideline. We're all in the group, so we talk all the time. But when I need to know what's going on in the middle, I talk to uh, Logan. When I need to know what's going on in the back end, that's for all the guys. I talk to Jesse. You know, I go back and I see. I say, like, yo, what's going on? Because they see it. They're seeing yep. it from a different level. They're in the, Like you said, they're in the middle. They see when a guy doesn't have the edge. They see when we miss a gap or what gap it hit. And I can call, I can, in real time, it doesn't have to be after the, on the sideline after play, it's immediately after play. As soon as the tackle's made, I'm asking Jesse or Logan, like, what'd you see? What's going on? I got to trust in Logan to not get mad at all of us for asking what the call is and hold that finger up, like, hold on, hold on, hold on, and then give us the call. Like that, these are people who I got to communicate with on the field. So you got to be strong through the middle. When the, when the Bengals, toward the end of the month of November last year, seven and six. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. You know what, man, a couple wins, you know, threaten, threaten for us. And then you guys go on a, just on a roll, five yeah. straight wins, you know, and ultimately uh, it's stopped by a battle in the Super Bowl comes down to the very last uh, play, literally. Yeah. And uh, in the winning streak, ends. but five straight wins, man, you guys just 12 and six, you know, after, after a seven and six uh, end of November and the defense in my mind was the key. I mean, Offensively, there were games. I, I, as a former offensive lineman, I don't know how you guys win that game in Tennessee when you know nine sacks were given up. It's like, wow, man, that's that's yeah. unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But defensively, three interceptions in you know both playoff games to start the playoffs. I'm like, man, this defense now is for real. Mm-hmm. What, was, what was it, DJ? What was there? Was there a, <coughs> a game or a moment or a meeting or anything where you guys were like, hey, you know? we're close, but this is what we got to do. I mean, was there anything that took place or did it just evolve? No, I think we had let some slip away from us in the beginning of the season. Some of them we got saved by the offense. I think we <clears> – I'm <throat> sorry. I think, you know, we win that San Fran game if we don't get – I feel like that taunting call kind of really – and we can talk about that forever. <laughs> that taunting call, just BS call when yep. nothing was said. It was crazy. Yep. So you go on to lose that game. You upset about that. I think we let off the gas, and we were pretty upset about ourselves of losing the Packers game because we felt like we were a better team than them. Um, you know, in the the Chargers game, things kind of got out of hand from us, and then you know the Browns beat us. You know that that game they came out there, they beat us that Sunday, and that's what happened. You know, um, and then you know that, and that's kind of how we felt the whole year. We felt like we kind of shot ourselves in the foot on most of those games. It wasn't like teams went out there and beat us besides that one time. You know, right. it wasn't like we went out there and just laid an egg. It was a few unfortunate plays back and forth, back and forth, that kind of, whether it was on our side of the ball or the offensive side of the ball, that kind of put us in that little dampened fire. And we knew once we, you know, we kind of got it all clicking and we made sure we forced the issue. Turnovers were something we talked about the whole year. We made sure we forced a turnover battle and started winning those games. Uh, we were going to get a win. Uh, we were going to get well, – once we locked in on what we needed to do. And my job in that is making teams one-dimensional, you know, making sure teams can't run the ball north and south, make them go east to west, build a wall with my teammates, and be able to make those tackles. Uh, so that's what we did. We started, you know, really focusing on making teams one-dimensional. Is what we talked about every week. Make them one dimension. They can't do both on you. They're just gonna have to beat us throwing the ball. Right, right. All right. So now, run it back. That's the new. That's the new catch. Yeah. Everybody wants to run it back. Yeah. And and you know this team's more than capable. There's no doubt yeah. the talent's there. But boy, you look at the AFC. I mean, mm-hmm. winning the AFC North. I mean, there's 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 good football teams in the AFC North. And then to defend the conference championship, there's 16 teams in the conference. I'd say you know. <laughs> probably 12 or 14 teams can say, we're going to make the playoffs. You know I mean? Yeah. Everybody's good, man. Everybody's got a quarterback. Everybody's got receiver. Everybody's good. Yeah. But I mean, everybody, we don't feel like it's us. You know, we, yep. we got a, we got a lot of respect to still go out there and get, um, I know personally I do as far as how I feel about a player. I was, you know, I'm not really somebody who cares about accolades or stats or things like that. Um, but 
not even being considered as an alternate in the Pro Bowl last year really pissed me off. And I, I was one of those guys like, there's no way you think eight guys in the AFC better than me. But if you do, then, you Choke. know, I got to go out there and show you. So I know personally there's a lot of guys who are like me that feel that way. They're going to go out there and put on a show and, you know, they're ready to go out there and compete. There's no – we don't, you know, go out there. We're not going to give you any promises or – throw out any stats. We're just going to go out there and show up every week and go out there and be the Bengals. And, you know, I think from last year, we feel confident in who we are, who we got back there spinning the ball, who we got catching it, who we got blocking, who we got running the rock. And then on defense, I think, we, you know, we all feel confident in us, all those guys, everybody rushing the pass and everything. You know, it's a bunch of dogs over there who become savages on Sunday. So I'm excited for it. All right, so I know it's just underwear ball. You guys are in shorts and T-shirts. You know, yeah. there's no helmets and pads yet. But yeah. <laughs> uh, what about the new additions? You know, the, the the offensive linemen that were signed in free agency and mm-hmm. uh, the guys in the back end that you got in the draft and all the pieces that are going to be put together and added added to the formula. What, how, how do you feel? What, what's it been like out there working with everybody this past week? No, guys look out there gelling well. Um, you know, there's no, there hadn't been any mess-ups. Uh Hadn't, yeah, hadn't been too many problems. Hadn't been any running into each other. I hadn't seen any of that going on. So that's always a positive. Um, but coaches aren't yelling too much. So those first couple of days obviously went well because usually you would have had a couple of yellings or a couple of run-ins by now. But these young guys are coming in very well prepared. And, then, you know, the older guys, I think that O-line, that's just a part of gelling. You know, that's, that's something. But Coach Pollard's going to take care of that. Those guys are going to do a good job. I think uh, that room's ran very well uh, from what I can see. And when I see those guys in the locker room, it's a very, very well-run room. Um, so, you know, it, the the new guys we got in the D-line, those guys are humble and they're fun to be around. They're, they're some smart kids. So things are going well. I'm excited to see those guys in the back end. I always like watching, you know, when, when more of the, like you said, underwear ball comes up, just the guys in the back end competing actually football is going in the air, guys are going to break up passes, one-on-ones, those type things. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Breaks? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You yeah. know that. Gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out firststarlogistics.com.